welcome. Welcome, everybody. As executive director of the John Bon Jovi Soul Foundation, and on behalf of our board, who's with us today, I welcome you here. I see sunshine, <laughs> brightness, and hope in this celebration. And as an organization, we believe that we can help end hunger and food insecurity through education, advocacy, and action. Today, we take action. We welcome all who are here because in some way you played an important role in the development of a dream now known as Soul Kitchen. And we welcome all around the world who are viewing today's events through live web streaming. And we thank you for your support also. The first person speaking at today's celebration is Mayor Pat Mena, who's been mayor of Red Bank since 2006. Mayor Mena's longtime dedication to making this community an even better place to live and work is evident through his past service on the Borough Council, Historic Preservation Committee, and his Borough Fire Commissioner and Chaplain. Not to mention his, too many to mention, philanthropic endeavors. And I know Mayor Mena supports new business in Red Bank, and he will absolutely love the environmental and sustainable components incorporated into Soul Kitchen. I have to point out the rain barrels <laughs> that are catching this rain to water our gardens. But I'd like to call Mayor Mena to the podium. Thank you. The rain barrels are overflowing, by the way. <laughs> uh, to those of you who are unfamiliar with Red Bank, please welcome to the sunny Jersey Shore and also to Red Bank in particular. Um, the warm, glowing rays of the sun have, here have always attracted me to Red Bank from my native Naples, uh, but nature is not cooperating today. However, John, Dorothea, and friends, I, I would like to point out something, that in many cultures throughout the world, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, rain, and especially torrential rain, is a sign of blessing. It's a sign of nourishment, it's a sign of hope, and it's a symbol of, most importantly, the germination of hope for the future. So we are lucky that it's raining in a sense. But how happy and grateful I am on behalf of all the residents of Red Bank to be with you, John and Dorothea, and all of your wonderful donors and friends in your foundation. And thank you for your renewed commitment, because it is not a new commitment, but your renewed commitment to the people of the area, to the residents of Red Bank, and to all of us in particular. Uh, we join and are absolutely enthusiastic in being able to welcome the Soul Kitchen from your foundation as the first of what we hope to be will be many more in many parts of the world. The presence of international media attests to that. But I, I also want to thank you, John and Dorothea, for your commitment to our town. It is not a newfound love that you have with us. It is an old attachment that has been nurtured over the years, your commitment to the Parker Health Clinic. Uh, your long-standing dedication to lunch break that feeds the hungry without question and is the oldest uh, food kitchen in Monmouth County, and your dedication to obviously because of your avocation and vocation to the Count Basie Theater and our young people. So in a sense, this is a reinforcement of your commitment to our municipality and our commitment and fidelity to make this work and to make this the germination of hope for future soul kitchens throughout the world. The opportunity that you're providing to people is a global opportunity, and it's reflected in a, in a local fashion. But uh, the, uh, the future for all of us, and for our young people especially, will be uh, driven by what is happening here today and by the beginning that we are celebrating. On behalf of all of our residents, on behalf of certainly the, the council and all of my predecessors, I want to welcome you and thank you for your commitment to Red Bank. Many years ago, our next speaker believed in what Red Bank could be and is attributed with turning Red Bank into a trendy New Jersey Shore community. 
He did this by actually getting the government to work with the business community. And Red Bank became an award-winning model for small town urban renewal. Mayor McKenna's enthusiasm for Red Bank continues. And I'd like to introduce a wonderful friend, a man who saw our vision from the very beginning and committed his support to us, former Red Bank Mayor Ed McKenna. Thank you, Mimi, Garthia and John, Gino, uh, Mayor Men and everyone. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to speak today. If you think this is bad luck though, Dorothea and John, I brought with me a little memento of a prior occasion. Um, I think it was 2003, Gene, when we opened the Parker Clinic. And if you remember, here's us doing the groundbreaking with the, with the umbrellas over our heads. And uh, the, two of, the two of you, Gene and I, and one of your children all, all in the picture. So it's good luck. This, that's mean, that means we do have a bright future, maybe. Um, I just want to say this. Uh, the, this got started because I went into a party one night where Dorothy and John were there, and John went like this and went like this. <laughs> and he calls me over and he says, we got to talk. I've got an idea. And we got to make this happen. And if any of you have talked with Dorothy and John before when they have an idea, it's not, is it going to happen? It's when it's going to happen. And that's really what it's all about. They care so deeply about our community and about mankind as a whole that when they said, this is our idea, this is what we want to do, what do we do? I said, well, don't worry about it. We'll find a way to make it happen. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, their vision for this incredible facility um, was there from the outset. Um, we started out with kind of humble beginnings. And we had to do a little um, wheel. Uh, to, to get our original facility open. But um, I can tell you that anybody that can get me to chop tomatoes and cut brownies in a kitchen, um, you're, you've gone somewhere. So um, I was really, really fortunate to be someone who was lucky enough to volunteer in the original facility. And again, chopping tomatoes, waiting on tables, setting up uh, the tables, all the rest of that stuff. I mean, it was really an exciting time. And when Dorothy and John shared their vision for, for getting a permanent facility, um, the excitement was overwhelming. And you know, it, it, I, in retrospect, I was thinking about it. Food is our, our neediest uh, thing in our life. Every one of us needs food to survive on a daily basis. And what you've done so often is to help others with their greatest need in life, and that is nourishment and food. So. Um, this facility is absolutely gorgeous. And when I came over a few times during the construction phase and I was looking at these, <laughs> these herb gardens uh, being built, and I thought to myself, my gosh, this is going to be one of the most gorgeous facilities in the world. And Dorothy and John, your vision has been fulfilled. And um, I also want to mention Zeet, who's hiding back there in the kitchen, uh, slaving away, preparing lunch for those of us that are going to stay for a few minutes. Um, and I also want to uh, congratulate Gene Cheslock, because Gene, your participation in our community and your devotion our, to our community is very similar to Dorothy and John's, and your presence and their presence has made this area, our community, so incredibly wonderful to be in and to share and to work in that um, I want to extend deepest congratulations first and foremost to Dorothy and John, also to Mayor Mena, to Eugene, and to our entire community. We are blessed blessed to have Dorothy and John in our presence and part of our community. So Dorothy and John, again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for all that you do for us. And I look forward to uh, working in this kitchen also, OK? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. The next speaker is a well-known and respected member of the Red Bank business and philanthropic community. Upon retiring from active medical practice, Dr. Jean Cheslock decided to open a free community health clinic for those members of the community without health insurance. Many of the same values in practice at the Parker Family Health Clinic are also the founding principles of Soul Kitchen. 
supporting those who do not have the means to pay, a volunteer-based organization, and serving clients' needs with dignity and a caring presence. We, too, look forward to being a strong, supportive community partner like Parker Clinic and Dr. Cheslock. Dr. Cheslock? Well, after what has preceded, I'll take the blame for the rain. Uh, as Ed pointed out, we're very familiar with deluges, uh, and the Bon Jovi's uh, went through that and prevailed, and I would have to say, John and Dorothea, on the basis of what Parker has experienced, it means great things for you and for Dorothea. Some of what I'm going to say, if I can find it, is repetitive, no doubt. But I, I wanted to just say, I know each and every one of you joins me in wel welcoming Dorothea, John, Zeet, Terrence, the whole crew in the kitchen, and all the volunteers present and to come. Welcome them to the sharing and caring community that Red Bank is. It is exceptional, as you have heard from speakers before me. I, too, am grateful that this is the first one in the United States and hopefully one of many around the world. But this community has been part of the Bon Jovi's earlier lives, and we still embrace them and love them and truly espouse the fact that they have chosen to put their footprint here in Monmouth County with us. Certainly, the Soul Kitchen represents a very unique part of the culinary diversity available to us. But today is more uh, about more than the transformation of a building from an empty shell into a beautiful structure. It's about more than what goes on there, the provision of a nutritious meal in a nurturing environment to friends and neighbors in transition in their lives with the opportunity for those individuals who dine there to give back and get involved as well. Dorothea, I know, and John are both about empowerment. What today is more about is the imagination, the vision, and the determination of a woman to bring a dream to reality. She saw something, she wanted to put the Soul Foundation stamp on it, she went through test runs, if you will, at lunch break in St. Anthony's, working out all the kinks, going through the frustrations and deliberations of trying to find a permanent home, and she prevailed. And now you see what you see a beautiful, wonderful facility. Dorothea does not like anybody clapping her on the back, but you deserve it, Dorothea. Thank you. And today is also more about a family, the Bon Jovi family, that chooses to share its prosperity with many. As I've said to John before, there are people who can affect change and do, and the Bon Jovi's are just that kind of family. We thank you for that commitment. However, veiled in their prosperity and goodness is a challenge to all of us to give back, to get involved, and to try our wings with serving others. In closing, let me say that the Soul Kitchen is another demonstration of the fact that the solution to many of our problems lie within us, the people working together. Mixed in with the carbohydrates, proteins, and proper amount of unsaturated fat <laughs> is a healthy, healthy serving of hope. I would say the main dish served here is hope. Trailing Ed and Pat is an unenviable task, trying to introduce John 
and Dorothea through John is more unenviable because there's no way to do it if you know them, you love them, you respect them, and you honor them. I would have to say one of the great thrills in my life has to become associated with the two of them. I will say no more, John. God bless you and Dorothea, and I am so happy and honored to be here and to be able to introduce you to this wonderful throng. Wow, thank you very much. Um, thank you all very much for being here. Um, I'm such a miserable day. I, I'm, I'm really sad that it's, uh, it's raining. But I want to first thank Dr. Cheslock and Mrs. Cheslock for being here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Gene Cheslock is the driving force, the, the center of the Parker Family Center. Um, this community needed health care. And at the time, it was a rented trailer on a borrowed piece of property. And um, like many other concerned local citizens, um, we knew that we could do something. Ten years later, the Parker Clinic has really done something. So thank you for your leadership, doctor. Good afternoon and welcome to the grand opening of the JBJ Soul Kitchen. I'd like to thank so very many here, beginning with our mayor, Mayor Mena, for his belief in our kitchen concept, and I, I really do thank you for that, sir. Uh, I'd like to thank the former mayor and our dear friend, Ed McKenna, who guided us. And when I say that, it's in a very New Jersey kind of way, but he guided us <laughs> every step of the way here. I'd like to thank our board members, Mimi, Mimi Box, who without Mimi, there would be... Heather Goldfarb, my partner Craig Spencer, Leo Carlin, Steve Perna, and of course Sister Mary Scullion, thank you all very much for being here. I want to thank all our volunteers, supporters, and staff for their generosity. So whether it was pulling weeds, washing dishes, or just words of encouragement, your support has brought us here, right here where we are today. I have to offer thanks and praise to our chef, Z Peabody, who has helped from the beginning and has implemented and flavored our menu, as well as guided what is now our staff. But my biggest thanks goes to my wife, Dorothea, because anybody who knows, knows. Anybody who knows, knows that it was her patience, her pers persistence, and her passion for this project that has led us here today. My, my, my best friend, my, my beautiful wife. We stand here today near the tracks, but also on a right track. This community restaurant has been two years in the making. We began our pilot program in the community center of the St. Anthony's Church, which is located right on this street, serving people one day a week. As we increase in our experience, we moved to lunch break where we served Sunday suppers and further developed our model. Today, I view as a celebration. What this is not is a time for politicking or finger pointing. But at a time when one in five households in the US are living at or below the poverty level, and at a time when one in six Americans are in fact food insecure, we believe that this is a time for this restaurant. This is a place based and built on community by and for this community. Without the help of so many locals, especially the AJD Construction Company, our local Whole Foods Market, without our volunteers like Amanda and Sydney or two of our wait staff, without Brendan or Chris who donated their time to paint this building, this undertaking would have been much, much more difficult. This is a time when our slogan, the power of we, means what it says. The Soul Kitchen is meant to serve people in need who then donate their time in our community in exchange for a nutritious meal for themselves and their families, as well as to those who can afford to contribute. Each is just as valuable to our success. 
We are not a soup kitchen. Here, we hope to empower individuals who just need a hand up and enable some who just need to lend a hand. When we feed a family or a family member in need, we're making a difference. When we've introduced neighbor to neighbor, we realize we were making a difference. When a painter, a student, a local builder, and a rock star work together, that's what we call the power of we, making a difference. So I hope that you'll please come back. You'll join us. Come and eat. Spread the word. Offer your fellowship. Most importantly, if you or someone you know are food insecure, we're here to serve. This is your community restaurant. Come be a part of the change you want to see. And thank you all so very much for coming and giving me a moment of your time. Good afternoon. Let's all, please come in, warm up, and have something to eat. Let's all go inside. Yeah, we're going to invite our guests to first go in, please, and start to enjoy our culinary d delights. And Tiffany, oh, okay. the press. Um, well, I guess if there's anyone back there that wants to throw out a couple questions, we have time to do that now. Okay. okay. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi. Introduce yourself, please. I'm Christine Percichetti with My 9 and Fox 5. Hi, Chris. I just wanted to ask you why red drinks? Is there a need here? And also, a second part of the question, why it's so special to you? I know you do things all over the world. Why it's so special, obviously? Well, I have roots here. I've lived here in the, in the county um, since I could afford to live anywhere other than my parents' house. So <laughs> I've lived in Monmouth County since um, 1985. We still have a house here. Um, and you say, why Red Bank instead of anywhere else? I think this is um, any town USA. And I'm not exaggerating the facts when I say that one in five households are living at or below the poverty level. That's $24,000 for a family of four. I don't know how anybody can afford to do that. One in six are food insecure, which means that somebody in that household is going to bed hungry tonight. This is Monmouth County, New Jersey. This is any town in the USA. This is America. We can fix these problems. So this is the pilot because I have roots here. This is a model that we can duplicate and others can duplicate. Okay, anybody? There you go. Hi, Tom Cardinal, Hi. My hands are smooth. <laughs> I'm the dishwasher. You don't want me to cook, but I'm really good at cleaning up. Um, just last Friday afternoon, and in all honesty, I was in Washington, D.C. with Mimi, um, serving on the President's Council on Community Solutions, literally left the White House, changed in the bathroom on the train, and got here in time to wash the pots and pans. So talk about a, a day that went 180 degrees. Um, but we've run this pilot program for nearly two years. We're at a place now where our history takes us up to today in experience. Tomorrow brings us a new experience. We'll increase upon that. But my, my father's in the kitchen. My wife is the one that has made all of this happen. My daughter's been a hostess, and I'm the dishwasher. I, I, I use the word hope to see more. There's a great need for them, um, both in urban and suburban environments. Uh, I've already had offers to increase our footprint. But much like everything else that I'm very proud to say, uh, as a board and as a foundation, our focus has been very specific. So whether we built one of our 260 houses of affordable units of affordable housing, or whether it was the restaurant, we never took a bit off more than we can chew, to use a food analogy. We're making sure that no matter what we do, if it's building houses or now opening the restaurant, we get it right. Last question, yes. Uh, Charlie Torres, Reed Radio, 1071 Yeah, please, let me. There are no prices on our menus. Um, let me be clear about that. There are no prices on our menus. What I said about empowering people instead of their walking in, um, we, we need their help. This is truly a community restaurant. So if you cannot afford to come and have 
this wonderful wait staff serve you this great nutritious meal, volunteer your time. If you don't want to volunteer in our restaurant, not a problem. We'll take you down to lunch break and you can help out in the soup kitchen. They'll provide you with a gift certificate to the restaurant. The food pantry, you could stock bags. Now, if the general populace want to come and participate and see effective change, leave a 20 in the envelope. That's helping with our overhead or taking care of the guy's meal next to you. So that's really as simple as it is. And a 12-year-old is empowered because if they're coming and working in the garden and they take that gift certificate home, that may be the meal that the family gets to go and celebrate. You know, so we're open to anyone and everyone who want to volunteer uh, or just come and have a great meal. It's, it's that good a restaurant. Thank you again for coming. Please come on and try some of this stuff, and more importantly, come back.